All right, folks, so in this video, I uh, just want to discuss uh, simulating a, a narrowband O2 sensor with a wide band. Um, having to explain the situation a lot. I uh, figure making a video obviously would make it a lot easier where I can just copy and paste the link to this video uh, versus having to type it out and explain it over and over. So I apologize in advance if you're hearing my wind chimes. I'm sitting out on my front porch. It's a nice evening out, so I figure it would be a good place to make this video. But, uh, but anyway, back on topic. Um, Basically, I just wanted to discuss the problems with uh, simulating a narrowband O2 sensor with ECM link. Um, it's not always a problem. It's only really a problem if your voltage, or I'm sorry, not your voltage, your wideband reading in ECM link is not matching your gauge. Okay. Generally speaking, you usually have that problem if you're using something. <clears throat> excuse me. If you're using something like an AEM, uh, the older digital gauges where there's a problem. The AEM analogs, you don't uh, normally have a problem with that one. I'm not real sure about the newer digital gauges from AEM. Those may be okay. I'm not sure uh, 100%. Either way, it doesn't matter. It could be AEM. That's normally where I see the problem, uh, where the readings aren't matching here. As far as that's concerned, it's not matching your gauge. And normally your gauge is going to be the more accurate reading. That's the one you want to trust over what you see here. Okay. If you've got an accurate reading on your wideband that you're looking at that, and this matches uh, here, simulate all day. That's not a problem. Um, but also, too, I want to mention that you're not only looking at idle here, you're also looking at your wide open throttle. A lot of times people will come to me with a log and say, hey, can you look at this? And I'll ask them, hey, does the readings match? Yes, it does. Sure. You know, it may match it idle, but it doesn't match a wide open throttle. And I'm looking at logs and your air, your air fuel ratio may be way off from what I'm thinking you should be. Uh, and so I'll tell them, hey, Grab a video camera, go out, do a wide open throttle pull, uh, videotape your, your gauge, and, and then come back, show me the log, show me the video, and then I can compare the two, because uh, your reading is going to pretty much level out. So if you're looking at, a, let's say, 11.0 uh, AFR, and then on your gauge it's showing, let's say, 13, uh, obviously it's not matching. That's what we want is for it to be matching, and that's the problem there when they don't match and you're using uh, a wideband to do dual functions there. It's trying to work as a wideband. It's also trying to give you the stock O2 sensor readings. Um, and of course, you know, wide open throttle, um, it, it's ignored anyways, uh, as far as the stock O2 sensor. Uh, but still, you still want to have your gauges uh, or your readings match your gauge uh, as compared to this, this reading here. Uh, one thing I will say as far as, uh, you know, trying to get these to match, uh, you can double click on this. There are some values. Uh, you can even look them up on the ECM link website. If you click on the knowledge base, type in AEM, scroll towards the bottom. They've got values that you can try and use to plug in and see if it'll help line them up. But you remember, you can't only look at just idle. You also have to look at wide open throttle as well, okay? Because you've got to be matching all the way through, okay? Uh, but as far as the switch point, normally you're going to bring up your captured values. Uh, and what you're wanting to actual, uh, or I'm sorry, not your captured, your displayed values, and basically what's going to be shown down here. Uh, and then, then the center of that box, there's a section that says raw values. You click on raw values, you're going to be looking through the parameters there. You're looking for the one uh, with your wideband. Uh, click OK on that. Click OK again, and it's going to bring your raw, raw voltage down here. Okay. Generally speaking, what you're looking for is a 14.7 reading in your, in your log. Okay, uh, a lot of people will take, let's say with the AEM, they'll disconnect their sensor and look for that because it'll give a steady 14.7 and then that's the value that they're using. And in this instance, 14.7, we've got 2.51, okay. If we go over to our uh, ECU config section and look at our narrowband uh, O2 simulation as far as wideband switch point right here, we've got 2.51 or I'm sorry, 2.55, we should be putting 2.51 here as far as a more accurate reading. <clears throat> if you unplug it, if you've got an AEM and it gives you that reading, you plug that in. I mean, basically, we're just trying to get it fairly close. It may be off a hair. It may be, you know, 2.53, 2.57, whatever. It may give you a couple up or down, uh, but we want to get it close as we possibly can because this can change our reading in ECM link as far as what that value is, okay? Um, but the problem with disconnecting that sensor, if you do it with an Innovate, you're going to go disconnect that sensor 
that's going to, and you you turn the key on to apply power to the uh, wideband controller, you're going to lose your memory. Okay, and so then you have to uh, recalibrate your O2 sensor. That tends to be a pain. So I, I generally tend to uh, do a log. I may have uh, the person uh, have their vehicle running. Uh, well, should, well, I'll stop the log and I'll scroll back through and I'm looking for 14.7 as far as our wideband and then plugging in our uh, our raw voltage in the switch point that generally gets everything a little bit more lined up uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, but the only other thing is as far as, you know, if we're in idle or cruise, uh, we're looking at our fuel trims here. We want these all to be around zero. Um, if these are zero, they may be going off of the reading that they're getting from uh, from the wideband, but that value, could, that voltage could be lost uh, from the gauge to the ECU. Uh, you're not getting that whole reading there, so these readings could be off, and you're adjusting your tune based on this. Okay, The ECU is not going to know any different. Uh, ECM link here is not going to know any different. It's just going to be looking at the numbers, and then you are plugging in whatever numbers you need to be getting the correct ratio that you need. So when you think these trims are around zero where you need them to be, they very well may not be. Okay. The other issue is, you know, if you are going wide open throttle, even though you're not uh, looking at the actual stock O2 sensor portion of it, if let's say if your gauge says uh, if you're look if you're shooting for 110 AFR. Uh, and the gauge itself says uh, 13, but it says 11.0 here, uh, your readings aren't going to match. That's really the more important uh, place you need to be looking at, and you really want it to be matching when you're going wide open throttle. It's more important than at idle. Uh, at idle, you're not going to have a strong load on it. Uh, it. You may just run so lean that you could possibly just shut off the car just from lack of fuel. Wide open throttle, that's not the same. You need a certain amount of air fuel, uh, ratio to uh, to be to be satisfactory when you're doing a wide open throttle pull. If those readings aren't matching and you're not aware of it uh, because you've got two different readings and you're not which, not sure which one to be using, that's a problem. I strongly encourage you to be able to use a stock O2 sensor uh, and not use a, uh, a narrowband O2 suit, two sensor uh, if you can by all means do so. Sometimes people are limited on the room. If your if your readings match, it's not a problem. It's only when they're not matching. Okay. Um, but that's that's basically it uh, concerning that. Just we want to make sure your readings are correct. And if they are not, uh, I, I encourage you not to be using no, narrow band O2 simulation if you don't have to. One thing that I will also mention is that sometimes, uh, especially the, for the second gen uh, guys, this is a first gen. Uh, but you have a rear O2 output and you have a front O2 output when it comes to the 2G uh, guys. They'll have a factory O2 sensor up front. They'll have a rear O2 sensor input. They will uh, they will only, even, even though they may even still have the factory O2 sensor plugged into the exhaust, they're simulating an O2 uh, you know, reading there as far as that's concerned, and you don't need to. If you've already got a stock factory O2 sensor that is actually working, great. Now, sometimes what you can do, uh, you can test it if your O2 sensor reading, let's say, we'll go back here. This is our front O2 reading, even though this is simulating. Uh, the front O2, and when you're simulating with the wideband, it's going to be a square wave, okay? If you're looking for this reading with the stock O2 sensor, it's going to be going up and down sort of more like a regular wave. Uh, but if that line is straight flat across and it's not moving, you can simulate an O2 sensor. And if this gauge starts going up and down, fluctuating up and down like so, then you know your stock O2 sensor is dead. You see this one going up and down and up and down. Um, if your other, you know, if you un or undo the simulation and that line goes back to going straight across, then you know your stock O2 sensor is dead. So that's another reason why it's good to be able to also use both O2 sensors because you can do it as a check. Uh, make sure that your sensors are actually good. If both of these are straight across uh, and you're not getting a fluctuation and you're staying in uh, open loop, for example, you might have another problem there, but uh, maybe we wanted to look at that, but that's another reason why it's always good to be able to use both if possible. But um, I simulate myself, but also too, I have an Innovate uh, wideband and my, do re my, my readings do match. Um, you know, again, it could happen with any wideband. Those readings may not match. There could be a wiring issue. It may not be connected very well. 
Uh, but those are things to be looking into. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there uh, for you guys as far as that's concerned. Uh, just so I don't have to keep explaining that over and over. But if you got any questions, just uh, give us a shout, uh, either myself or on the groups. But other than that, y'all have a good one.